welcome to HT Monaro build. Been a long overdue. Um, been doing plenty around the house. Um, haven't had time to work on the old girl, so I thought I'd get it out, put it out in the sun, and uh, have a good look at it, and um, get some motivation to get this thing finished. I really want to have it done this year. So where are we at? Well, uh, I've got to do the wiring harness. Um, I was going to get it done, but I'm getting quotes of like between three and eight thousand. I've got that painless wiring harness, so I think I'll terminate most of it myself and then pay someone to come and finish that job for me. Um, I've also got to, uh, once that's done, I can finish putting the interior in. Um, I've got to put the radiator in, the um, fuel tank and fuel pump, wiring for the fuel pump. The fuel tank needs a new kit to go through it. Uh, I've got to finish polishing the stainless so I can get the, um, the glass put in. Uh, I think once we see the wiring done and I can put the interior in, because we've got all new interior there, um, we're going to see a big uh, big difference in the car. You know, it'll look, it'll look a lot more finished uh, with that and glass done. So I need to probably finger out and do the stainless polishing. Uh, once I've done the glass and the interiors in, what's left? Well, a uh, little bit of suspension work. Uh, Got to assemble the rear brakes. Uh, and then put it into the brake shop to do new brake lines for me and get it all plumbed up and working. Uh, put it into a, a workshop to get them to put the clutch in for me. Um, the, the, I've got that Tremec TKO 600 and it's a custom fit and I don't know how to go about shimming uh, and the pedal height and all that. I, don't, I, I, I really don't know how to do that. If it was a simple matter of putting a clutch in I could have a crack at that, probably no worries. but. Because it's a new install, I'm going to give it to um, a mechanics workshop to to do that for me. Um, that way, I could be, um, uh, you know, make sure it's it's done right. Um, I've got to put the tail shaft in. I've got to do fuel lines. Um, once I've done fuel lines and, and the radiator, and once the wiring's done, then we can look at firing it up and getting a. Um, we've got a base tuner. The motor's been tuned. The 600 horsepower uh, on the dyno. Um, I've got the headers fitted to it now. But uh, with the full exhaust, once we get that done, it'll, it'll need a retune, uh, probably down a couple of jet sizes, I was told. Um, what else we got? Look, I've got, I do have to fit this suspension I've got here, um, but, uh, made by Motofab for the rear and put in the rear shocks. But um, I'm not in a rush to do that. Um, it can be driven around as it is, so. Um, quite happy with that. Um, yeah, why have I been taking so long? Well, you guys will remember, and I do thank you for your patience, I really do. But you guys will remember, um, had a lot of building going on. Well, I'll give you a quick demo of the finished product. The wall's all done through here, got the pool done, water feature, got a decking. Decking's pretty cool, and then I'm just in the process of building a pump box so that lifts up. So yeah, you can see uh, along with the concreting and all that that we had done, we had a huge amount of work to do. Huge, and I mean I did most of it myself. Obviously, I got the concrete done, but I put the glass pool fencing in, and uh, I did the slats on the walls, that sort of thing. So all of it very time-consuming. Uh, I've still got to build a barbecue out the, out the back, but um, in the meantime, let's get some work done. I'll show you. I'm going to get these put in. So there's a bit there's a bit to do as far as the wiring goes, but um, we'll get there. And uh, I look forward to um, getting starting on it again and taking you guys with me, because it has been a while. So thanks for your patience, and let's get into it. Okay, so one of the jobs I've got to do is change out the sway bar, or the anti-sway bar, should I say. This is the factory one for Holden 308. Uh, one of one of the um, subscribers to the channel pointed out that uh, that wouldn't fit with the with the um, radiator that I've got for a Chev. So um, I've ordered a new one. This is from KMath. It's a um, 24mm uh, anti sway anti-sway bar and uh, should fit with the radiator 
um, the Chev Radio and also um, it comes with all the new rubbers and whatever, everything I need so I'll uh, throw that in and um, it'll be good. That was uh, 450 bucks if you're wondering, delivered. Alrighty, I'll get into it. Right, uh, out with the old and in with the new. So um, 24 mil for the new one and you can see, I don't know what that is. But uh, this one's a lot more, a lot thicker. Let's hope it bolts in alright. Morning everyone, welcome to HT Monaro build. Just picking up where I left off the other day. Fitted the um, anti sway bar. I don't know if you can see that. So it's all done. And the other thing I did was uh, ripped out that uh, radiator that had that engine stand down there. That's got the old reciprocating saw out and just cut that piece out, pulled the radiator out. Um, I've still got to pull the um, ignition and whatever off that. But what I'm doing now is I've spoken to you guys before about when I built that engine stand, had a battery exploded stupidly, grinding next to a battery and exploded. So what it's done is it's put all these uh, marks like acid on the on the top of the radiator. It just looks shit now. So before I get too further in too much into it, I'll just try on this little piece down here. As I thought I'd just show you where I'm at now. So that was all stained with acid, just a light rub with 2000 grit that's coming off. So I'll show you that. For example, let's have a look at this one here. So that should bring that aluminium up nice. It's obviously going to take some work to get the bits that are um, really bad, but um, it's only going to take time. So around here is going to take a bit of time. So look, let me get into it and I'll uh, show the finished product uh, when I finish doing that. Thanks. Righto, back at the car. and. The radiator just sitting there. Now I haven't drilled these holes yet to mount that uh, in there because I need it on this side because um, I believe you've got to rubber mount the uh, the radiator, have it rubber mounted so that the aluminium isn't touching the metal, um, and it'll stop um, electrolysis, corrosion of your. your system so um i'll leave that for now and i'll go to an exhaust shop and you can get the little rubber uh with a male bolt head or bolt end on either end a male end either end with a bit of rubber in the middle and um, that'll cushion that radiator so now that i've seen that um it's gonna need a tiny tiny little rubber um bracket in there or something uh, rubber um those bolts i was talking about and on this side, and then I'll be able to mount that in there. So that's good. Another couple of jobs off the list. So we thought we were going all right until we have a look down there. And you can see that that, that bottom radiator hose is going to foul right there. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I don't know. Not looking good. Not looking good at all. Always a bloody problem. Right. Oh. Also, I've put that sway bar on wrong, and that needs to be facing down. This bend. What's that supposed to be down? Which could be the case because there's 
actually plenty of room here. More work. Something else I'll have to have a look at. Right. Alright, some success. I'm a bit retarded. I had the sway bar on upside down. But we got there in the end. And now that fits on. I do need a shorter hose. You can see it's too long anyway. Um, there's a kink in it just here because it's too long. Once I get a shorter hose, that should be fine. So, um, yeah, happy with that. It can even come up just a little bit so that's not rubbing on it or put a bit of protection around the hose or whatever. Lift the radiator up a bit, but yeah, I think that'll be fine. So, thankfully, it's all done right now. Finally. Right, I'm in the shed. I'm going to crack, have a crack at uh, this fuel, fuel tank and pretty much that's where I'm going to mount the um, mount it. So uh, something else of interest, it's an electric fuel pump that is, something else of interest um, is that the bottom, the inside of that tank is so clean, like it's absolutely, it looks like this. It's absolutely as clean as anything. So I was going to put a fuel tank resurfacing kit in it, but I don't, I don't think I will. Uh, I don't see the point of going out of my way to make work for myself. Um, and I just don't know if there's much of a benefit in doing it. So I think I'm going to leave it. Um, I don't think I'll put a kit through. The only thing I was just looking at just before is potentially moving that just that way so it's out of the way of the filler. So maybe move that up that way. I've got a photo of someone else's. So it looks like this fella's, um, see, see where that baffle is? There's these world or spot worlds for the baffle inside the tank, just there. Looks like he should have done that there. So I might move that move that up that way a little bit so it's in line with the baffles as per for that photo and it's, that's not going to foul the filler when I put the filler in either so I'll remark that hole now and then it's a matter of drilling a three and one quarter inch hole there so I'll get onto it Drill a pilot hole first, it makes sense. So they say. So, what I've done is progressing with this fuel tank. Is I've been using the wire wheel on the drill to get down into these little areas, clean all them up. What I'm yet to do here. I've done the. I've used the um, flap disc for the whole top, and and again this attachment to get into these grooves clean them all out i'll probably have to do that by hand around here um, but just working my way through it the reason i'm going to such 
um, effort is because this had underlay on it and it sort of stuck to it so it really needs to be a clean surface as we know to for the um, adhesive to um, the paint should I say to stick to it uh, I'm going to do the underneath I'll take you through that process when I when I do that um, but uh, that's where we're at at the moment um, there's a few marks in there I don't want a like perfect gloss finish these marks are sort of I don't know they look like pressing marks maybe I'm not really sure but I'm not too concerned that needs to be done a little bit then uh, I've been to the local poach paint shop you know I have got a compressor um, mind the mess I've been doing some other work I've got a compressor and god there's shit everywhere and a spray gun which I haven't used yet I've never used a um, spray gun but uh, I'm yet to fit this water trap um, and these yeah these water traps as well water oil separators and I don't have the fittings I don't have enough of these and the correct fittings I've gone through all the fittings that I had um, this is these are, this is water separator in case you don't know it's quite good this is um, a silica gel and you fill one of these up with the silica gel I can't remember which one and it basically changes color when it re when it picks up all the moisture um, and the good thing about it is that once that I've got another pack here so you can sort of just use a few different ones but once it's wet we'll pick up all the moisture in the in the lines you can bake that in the oven again and it comes up like new again so pretty good thing um, despite having all that I'm not gonna worry about painting it with with the gun because I, I haven't used it before and I don't know what sort of finish I'm going to get to be honest and it's really not that important to me to to be perfect so I'll run you through what I've got I've got a high fill primer here this is um, um, primer filler and that's just because of the finish that we've got on here you know from the flapper disc um, three coats of that top and bottom a light 600 um, sand by hand uh, on the top I've got some custom paint made up warm silver metallic is the color and the code uh, I'd be interested it's, it's a little it's got just a little hint of gold in it so I'm thinking that might go well with the body of the car uh, you will see it that's for the top half you will see it in the in the um, boot um, again it's not important to me the exact color so I just sort of I just sort of wanted rather than just a basic silver I wanted something with a little bit of depth in it so I had to get that made up so that that'll finish fine I'm, I'm sure uh, for the underneath we've got I bought two cans of the filler um, um, to give it three coats the, the underneath of the car I've got this anti chip coating um, just in black um, stone shield this was all recommended to me from the guy so at the paint place so um, I've gone with his recommendations on everything um, and then I've got two cans of the super gloss clear and he assures me that it should off the nozzle should should do pretty good that's going to do top and bottom I'll, I'll clear coat the stone guard and the um, and the silver on top so that's where we're at at the moment You've still got this side if, if you could run your figure on that you'd feel how rough it is and whatever whereas that's you know it's cleaned it off I've still got to do along here and on this side um, I've used I think I've shown you a while ago when I was well for you it won't be a while ago it'll be this episode but for me it was two or three weeks ago um, I had the scraper scraping all of the um, shit off that off the top of that so um, progressing well and I'm going to finish sanding that back I'll probably film the bottom a little bit for you and then we can start looking at painting it so once it's painted then I'll be able to fit the fuel submersible fuel pump once the fuel pump fitted I'll be able to fit the tank and once the tanks fitted I might concentrate more on some wiring and looking at being able to start the car so still a long way off that still got to fit that radiator properly and, and things like that but um but we're working towards it I really want to get a, a whole heap of stuff done so um 
that's the mission at the moment. So uh, that's where we're at. Um, yeah, take through the process. Good on you. Cheers. So I run out of batteries. Got three of these batteries for the for the stuff. So um, really chilling through the batteries. So I'm just using this opportunity to um, try and get into all these nooks and, nooks and crannies and give it a you know give it a really good final finish. I don't know if I'm going overboard with it to be honest. I don't, I don't, I'm just winging it. But um, at the end of the day, you can't sand too much, I suppose, unless you sand through, which I'm not going to do. So, um, yeah, just working my way through this. Right, everyone. Uh, I think I've got this petrol tank to a stage. I don't know if I've gone overboard, but it's uh, nice and clean now. All the little marks, top and bottom. All around there. I think I've done a pretty decent job. That's the underneath. So, um, pretty good to me. Oh. They're the only bits I couldn't really get to. I'm not really worried about that. So, just those two. Other than that, oh, and these two, sorry, in this corner as well. Other than that, it's all uh, good to go. So all I did was use the drill with one of these fittings on it, which was quite handy to get to the difficult to reach spots. And obviously the flapper went through one and a half of those. And then I was just sanding everything, uh, a final sand with um, a grit sandpaper. So my next step is to uh, vacuum it out. And then I'll wipe it down with a clean rag and thinners. Once it's wiped down with thinners, then I'm going to apply the hive tool. Um, I'll probably look at um, suspending it off the, uh, you know, off the roof or, or whatever to paint it as you as you usually do. Um, but yeah, I think it's actually going to come up pretty good. I hope the hive feels thick enough to get rid of the the scratched finish. Um, obviously on the bottom and just everywhere really there's all these little dents and everything you can probably see all them. Um, you know if I was after a mirror finish I'd um, you know fill them and that but I'm not you know, after that finish. In fact we're using a, a rough textured as I showed you yesterday a rough textured um, stone shield anti-chip stuff anyway so I'd say most of that I'm looking forward to seeing how it'll come up, but I think it'll, I think it'll come up fine. So what I'll do is I'll get the vacuum cleaner, I'll give it a clean, I'll um, decide whether I'm going to paint it in halves, whether I do the top half and then the bottom half, might be the easiest way, um, or whether I just do just hang it by wire and at least with the high fill three coats of high fill, like maybe do all that at once. So I'll see how we go. But uh, I'll put the camera on a little bit anyway. Thanks. That's actually got a lot of metal filings still in there, so I'm going to need to get my hand in there with a rag and wipe that all out. And so I'll get to that. Have to get the missus to do it because <laughs> my hands are too big. Movie, babe. You're on the movie. <laughs> um, I'll turn the torch on. So that's pretty clean in there now. Fingerprints off. Alright, so this is what I've come up with. 
in the spray booth. I just tied some rope from one side of the shed to the other. Hang that up there. Hopefully I'll be able to pretty much get all the way around it with relative ease. I don't see it being too much of an issue. And hopefully uh, get some paint on it. Now, one thing I am going to do that someone, a couple of you guys suggested to me, so I appreciate that. Two people mentioned it actually is I'm going to get this primer and I'm going to heat it up. How am I going to heat it up? I'm just going to sit them in a bucket of um, fairly warm water, uh, shaking it regularly, shaking the cans regularly. And uh, apparently when it's a bit warmer, the fluid, um, the paint spreads uh, thinner or better. So I'll give that a crack, that's a good idea. So I'll, uh, I might even give the shed a bit of a Sweep first too, it's pretty messy after doing all that cleaning up. So we'll give it a bit of a tidy and um, and we'll get into it. Right on. No, no, it's got the shed, it's starting to rain now. I know you're not supposed to paint the rain, but I'm not after a mirror finish. Here's another trick I'll learn. I'll show you. How's that? Yeah. What are we doing to it? Go and spray paint it. Yeah, spray paint it with what? Undercoat. Undercoat. There we go. You've got it. You had it right from the man himself. We've sprayed it with the undercoat. So that's a that's one can. Um, I, I obviously I knew I shouldn't have done it, but I did do it. Um, sweeping the shed down after wiping it. I probably should have swept it and then wiped it because I can see imperfections on this side. Bits of dust and whatever that's been kicked up but I'll give it the one coat. Um, I'll let it dry for a bit yep. and once it's dried for a bit I'll um, give it a light sand um, and then I'll uh, probably give it another coat and build up that high fill and give it another light sand. There is a few runs in it which which doesn't really worry me because that'll it'll come out when I sand it. Mm. And uh, what are your thoughts? Pretty good. Pretty good. Like the colour. Like the colour. Yeah. Oh, the bottom is going to be black and the top's going to be silver. Mm. So I like silver. You do? Well, good. Well, there you go. All right, we'll keep going. Thanks very much. Actually, I've got another job on the go, which has proven to be difficult. Oh, sorry about that noise is these are the quarter windows for the rear and when you replace them you've got to get these off um, i've got new glass there and in order for me to be able to put these channel things in or whatever they've got to, i've got to reuse these and i i had some problems getting them off so what i've been doing is for the last three months because I just haven't got around to doing the job I've been hitting it with the CRC giving it a bit of a spray and hopefully that's pen sorry about that noise hopefully that's penetrating into it and then what I'm going to do is use a um, one of these tools for the, getting a I've got an adjustable one and use that to get the um, get those fittings off that I need so hopefully I can do that and then I can go about putting the putting the rear glass in. So yeah, good? Yep. <laughs> Alright, so next is I've given it a uh, rub down to dry now, gave it about an hour. Gave it a light rub down with some 600 grit wet and dry. Um, 
Now we're going to get the dust off it with complete care. Uh, we'll give it a bit of a wipe down again, uh, get all that dust completely off it. Um, I've just cleaned up where the runs were and a um, uh, couple of edges there I've, I've gone through to the metal so I'll just sort of give it another coat with the, um, the uh, like here you can see the it's starting to get through to the metal there, yeah, I don't know if you can see that with the camera. There's just a few edges that need, need a bit of a touch up, I'll give it a bit more high fill and uh, we'll let that dry and then I'll probably paint the top half. And then once the top half's dry, I'll paint the, I'll mask it up. I'll probably do that tomorrow, I'll have to leave it overnight. I'll mask it up and then I'll paint the bottom half. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get down to, I'll get to it. Cheers. Righto, so I've done the final sanding and what have you. Wiped it down, cleaned it with the air. Cleaned it, I think I said before that I wiped it down with, um, uh, thinners, but no, I just didn't. I wiped it down with the wet, wet rag, and then just got the um, nozzle, the air nozzle, and um, what do you call it? Just dried off all the water, so that's all good. So we are ready for some paint. Um, so I'm just doing the old uh, shake the can up. The paint I had made up. Well, that didn't work very well, did it? Hopefully, I didn't break that nozzle. Fuck, ah, it looks like it did. Oh no, maybe not. Too cross for that. Was, I did already shake it, and I was just going to film that to show you. And then I fucked up, so it's always the way, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I'll go and start putting some paint on that. That's good to go see what it looks like looking forward to seeing the color it's not a straight silver like it could have got off the shelf silver but I wanted something with a bit of depth so I had it made up and this isn't cheap but um it's for the top half so it should look all right in the boots got a little bit of gold in it as well so yeah looking forward to seeing it see how we go all right well that's the first coat look silver silver it's all right to me not really that worried about what it is, but yeah, no, it looks alright to me. Quite happy with the car. See if I can get the torch and see if that makes a difference for you. That'll be fine. Even the finish, you know, it's not like super smooth, you can still but you know like I didn't put any filler in there, I only used high fill. Um, I wasn't after a glass glass off perfect finish so it's fine we'll get another couple of coats of paint and um yeah once i've done the paint another another couple of coats of paint i'll um i'll, do, I'll mask it up once it's dry so i'll leave that sit overnight after all the coats of paint on it and then i'll like i say i'll mask, mask it up um tomorrow i'll do the black on the other thing um, and then probably again let that dry overnight and then it'll, and then it'll just be a couple of coats of clear coat you know three or four coats of clear on it maybe more I'll probably just keep putting clear on it until I mean I guess you can put too much on it but I'll put plenty on it in case I get a couple of stone chips in it or whatever on the underneath but yeah no, that'll be fine look forward to it good I was going to um, mask it up and do the bottom but I'm thinking I'll probably clear it I was reading the instructions on the clear and it said to let it, it it's fully cured after 24 hours and while the surface of the paint's clean as well no dust or whatever settled on it I might as well clear it now because the paint is um, it dries very quickly the paint is uh, look I'm not very Good with paints, so I don't really know what I was going to say there. It's some, it's not 2k or it dry, he said it dries almost instantly. Wh whichever one that is, I, I don't know. I've, I've got to be honest with you, I don't know. Um, so it's it's ready really to clear, so I'm not going to clear it straight away. So take two. 
this to the clear. Rightio, this is the next day. Um, pretty happy with it actually, it turned out pretty good. Uh, I like the colour. I just lost the battery there for a second, but uh, yeah, I've shown you the colour, I've put a clear on it. There was a run in it, but it's going to be where the hoses are for the fuel pump, so I've had a bit of a, a win there. So um, that was just a run in the clear. Uh, anyway, the, that's all masked up. Not really worried about a nice perfect finish on this service because that's the service that mates with the um, the boot, so um, that's fine. Um, and uh, ready to go. Just giving that a blow down with the air, getting the dust off it, and uh, ready to go. So we've got the uh, the shaking tool. We give it a shake, and uh, and I'll get the spray. So see how we go. Cool. All right, so uh, that's just one coat of that texture coat, the top coat stuff. It's said to do two or three coats, so that's um, we've got to give that 20 minutes, and then I'll give it another hit. Actually, I might just give that a little spray instead. Um, yeah, it's going alright. I'll give it another coat later, and um, and then some clear tomorrow. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with the Stain Shield Anti-Chip Coating S83 by Pacer. Um, Comes out really good. Quite happy with that. It's exactly what I want. It's obviously wet at the moment. Um, it it goes a more matte finish once it dries. I noticed from the from the first coat, I had to put two cans on it. Uh, just the bottom took two cans. Uh, and then I'm going to gloss over that, so um, I need to leave that uh, 24 hours to cure before I gloss over it. So I'm just going to leave it set up in the shed like that, and let it dry, and uh, put a clear coat, well, I say gloss, I mean clear coat, and I'll put the clear coat on that later and uh, tomorrow, and once that's dried you'll be able to see the finished product. Uh, and I'll be able to fit the, uh, fit the bloody fuel pump and uh, get it into the car, which I'm excited about. So um, we're making progress. So uh, yeah, cool. I'll bring you back tomorrow once we put the clear on it. Cheers. Right, oh, no, what are we up to? Well, I'm just assembling the fuel pump at the moment. So there's the pump itself. I set. I've got the. Uh, this is going in. Like so. So that's that's mounted like that. This actually comes off. I don't know if I've shown you the finished product, but uh, it turned out pretty good. Um, that Raptor coat. Look, there's a few runs in the clear. It's the first time I've used clear, but I'm not worried. It's in the fuel tank. Most of this will be covered in the boot anyway. So, um, anyway, I'll set this up as I said to show you. So that goes there. Um, I don't need to cut anything off this length. I need that as long as I can get it. Now, they are just short, but from research, what other people have done, they said it's fine. I mean, you might lose five litres or whatever of fuel, but that's cool. Now I'm just going to cut this black tube and put that on there um, as low as I can get that. Attach that with hose clamps and uh, and we'll carry on. I'll keep you keep you posted. It's pretty easy stuff, really. All right, got me a little helper with me. Yep. How am I, bud? Yep. All right, what are we doing today? We're going to put the, the petrol tank, tank on, into the, yep. onto the. Yeah. So I'll put the sealant around there. We've got the nuts and bolts. And that's going in there. So wish us luck. I'll get underneath and we'll, we'll have a bit of a crack at it. So what you're going to do, monster, is hopefully that'll work. Is uh, I'm going to you're going to need to be careful. Yeah. You're going to put you in there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
to this one without going to bend this one. Right, I'm going to give you some nuts and bolts. Yeah. And what you're going to do, you're going to screw them in as far as you can. Jiggle it around, so you go. So where do we put them? Here. In the corners. Yes. Oh. Right, we're ready to go, Pat? Yep. Okay. Alright. Now it looks like it could be a bit tricky to get in, doesn't it? In. With the help of my little mic, should I say? Put the fuel tank in. Look at that. Good. Very happy. Lovely. Another step in the right direction. So I'll put the sender, I'll put the um, fuel tank sender in in the back corner. I've got a new one. So we'll whack that in, uh, and then we can look at putting the um, wiring harness, laying that in. And the other thing I was going to look at doing today was possibly building this fuel log and all that. Get all that happening because um, I, I did doing a bit of research on that this morning. See see how that all goes. So keep ticking little things off and we'll get there eventually it looks good with that petrol tank in happy with that, Look at that. That's neat. every little bit more it starts looking like a real car so uh particularly happy with that sweet thank you uh, fuel sender and i'll just remember the factory one because the gauges that i bought now i don't know much about all this so hopefully i got it right but the gauges that i bought are supposed to work the same ohm rating as these ones so hopefully the bloody gauge works when we get to that stage so this comes with a new retainer ring and all that sort of stuff so we'll, uh, we're going to whack it in one of those jobs that I'll swear a lot so I'll turn this off and get it done because it's going to take some mucking around. Alright, other job is to put these rear brakes back together so I, I painted all these and I bought a new spring clip, new um, what's this thing called? brake cylinder or something, I don't know, cylinder body, that's what it looks like, so the new cylinder body, so look, we'll give it a crack, we'll, we'll see if we can work it out, we've got a couple of photos 
because I can't really remember how it went. So anyway, I'll try and put it together. So here we go. Bit of a progress shot for you. I'm getting there. I'm not doing too badly considering I didn't know how it went. So I've just been sort of bumbling my way through it and whatever. Uh, but anyway, I found one of these which made life a lot easier. That's from a spare one I had down here. So that um, enabled me to um, you know, work things out a lot easier. These things are a prick, I'm sure everyone knows, the retaining pins. Um, other than that, going right, I think. So it's just a matter of now, I've got to make sure I put the right adjuster in. And also this, um, where is it? This concave thing, convex, concave, does that go down like that or does it go the other way? And does it even go there? I'm pretty sure it goes there. Does that go like that? Or like this? I'll try and work it out. But uh, going all right, get me. And that's a wrap on the brakes. So that's both sides done. So um, cool. I didn't expect that to get that job done. I don't know. I mean, I, th I just thought it'd be a bit of a prick of a job because uh, I, I didn't pull the brakes apart so I didn't know how they went back together but I managed to work it out with a few photos and some help online and whatever a while ago the books probably the book actually that was the main thing um, other than that yep yeah, all good all new parts restored painted good to go happy days Hamilton finish I've got there just paint the base up with them and um, put them back on the car so Another little job moving forward. Alright, I, I think that's going to be about the end of this episode. Um, it's been a long time coming. I'm actually glad that we got it over and done. We got it out of the way anyway. So, I was going to do this fuel system, but I'm going to need to get some advice. Uh, it's a, it's a um, return, it's got a return line and everything. So, I, I really don't know how to set up these regulators and and whatever um, for the return system there's the fuel filter I just need I need you know this this um, this is going to be mounted so I assume that that would be on the end there but I could be could be wrong with that so um, I need to maybe that goes on there maybe I need another bracket for this um, stuff like that so I'll, I'll, I'll work that out so just been doing a little bit more work, sorry about the chainsaw in the background. It's late in the afternoon so there's not much light but this just shows you the centre console now. Purists look away because I had to trim the inside here with the old um, Dremel. But the car's far from original, yes it's a Monaro. But she's far from original, so and it's mine, so I'll do what I want, which I have done all the way along. So it gives you a bit of an idea of how that's gonna look around right, to mint. That's gonna look really good. So I've just been doing that. The other thing I've done, I'll take you around the other side. Actually, is underneath, I'll take you underneath. As I put the handbrake cables on, and yes, in the workshop manual that's how it's got a, maybe a stainless steel one cables are holding that and then i'll put these bolts on for the bottom shock here so that's all done now brakes are finished handbrakes attached they only terminate under the transmission tunnel so the the center section of that handbrake for those that know the vehicle isn't on but not to worry there and lastly this has all been, this is the uh, accelerator, so I've painted that and lubricated the pivot point and now what we have to do is find the right screws under there 
and screw that in then I can attach the if you can see that right up under there attach that um, uh, cable this has been painted and cleaned and that'll that'll go in so we are kicking goals I feel, I feel like I've had a really good um, opportunity to get a fair bit of shit done so I'm pleased with that but uh, time to pack it away and go to work unfortunately so um, well the, the only other thing I did was excuse me put these bolts in for the um, oh, and the pillar lights I've done that too put the pillar lights in um, those bolts are for seat belts so the seat belts require a little plate like that so I've mounted the plate up under there I actually haven't mounted it to be honest um, looking for advice there did you guys mount it or you didn't worry about it you can put a, a little bit of weld in there or you didn't worry about it I mean that's going to pull against that whether it's welded or not so I'm not real worried about it uh, I haven't put the centre one on yet because I don't actually know where that's going to sit but you know there'll be another one in, under there for the centre ones and then the seat belts are all in here so all none, none of the retractable stuff just the lap sash stuff so the original holding symbol on it and whatever for those that know about getting branded by those hot seat belt <laughs> seat buckles but uh, so um I think what I'd like to do next is just get finish that off that um, accelerator cable so that we've got um, full accelerator usage from the linkages and all that get that all down, done properly then I can mount the radiator properly once I've got because I just need to get some rubber mounts for that because you, I, I believe you can't put an alloy radiator against the metal if you do, you risk electrolysis in the alloy radiator. Um, if you had a stray earth, and you can measure that, I'll probably take you through that process actually. We actually measure the um, the, uh, the the put the elect uh, the the uh, terminal off your um, electrical um, multimeter, and you see if there's a current running through your water. Um, so we'll do that anyway to make sure it's not uh, untoward. Um, and then once I've done that, I've been to the, I've been to my auto shop, and I've seen uh, we've spoken about the fuel lines. Um, so uh, next time I'll do some work, it'll be on the fuel lines. Sorry about that chainsaw in the background. It'll be on the fuel lines. Uh, once we've got the fuel lines in and plumbed up, I've got to push this in. That's a bitch. I don't know. Is there a trick to that? To getting that pushed in? Do I just got to? use some mugger duggers and do that i don't know a bit of a bitch i've got three of these uh fuel fillers to choose from i've got the harness there for the fuel pump we'll run the new cables i've got to i've got to get all the um all the 90 degree bends and 45s and whatever else i need get it all ordered uh, and then i can run the um fuel pump little fella you've been helping me haven't you mate yep, yep. And uh, you know, then we're getting at a stage where once I, then, then I'll tackle the wiring, and once I've tackled the wiring, we're getting at a stage now where we can almost like fire it up. My way of thinking: once it's fired up, then I can get the brakes finished, get them plumbed up, and also the um, get the brakes done, and uh, yeah, the fuel lines and all that sort of stuff. And then I can whack the interior in, and then you know, like, then we're looking, we're looking like a real car then. So happy days on that, and uh, yeah. So thanks for watching this episode. I've uh, really enjoyed working on this time around, and I think uh, next time I'm home, I'll do the same thing, mate. I'll pull it out, pop it in the centre of the carport here, and um, just work away, getting shit done, just smashing shit out. So um, yeah, going really good. Happy days. Talk to you next time. Cheers.